Sue, Sue Spencer, thank you for your outstanding contribution to our industry. And can you please now say a few words? Wow, um, Jenny's absolutely right. I hate doing this sort of stuff. But anyway, thank you so much. I am really honoured. Uh, looking around the room tonight, I can see many people that I've worked with and who have been, had a major impact on my career at the ABC over the past 30 years, and I do feel really humbled. It began in early 1985 when Peter Manning hired me as a researcher on Four Corners. I'll never forget my first day at Gore Hill. It was approaching lunchtime, and Peter said, we're all going out for lunch. I thought it would be a quick sandwich at the Gore Hill Canteen. But we went to a Thai restaurant in Willoughby. The whole team came. It was great fun. But it was well past four o'clock when we returned to work. I thought, well, this isn't a bad job. While this was the era of long lunches, too many cigarettes, and sometimes too much wine and beer, Working at Four Corners was no slouch. It was an amazing entree for a new researcher. I was working with Peter Manning, Chris Masters, Andrew Ollie, Jonathan Holmes, Kerry O'Brien, David Marr, and Peter Couchman. Yes, they were all men, with the exception of the formidable Jenny Brocky. But they were all generous colleagues, teaching me to always set the bar high make that extra phone call, make copious notes, and fact check everything. Be prepared to take a risk and hone what Peter Manning famously called your over the horizon radar, which meant for a Four Corners program, which had a turnaround of six to eight weeks, where, you would where would your story be six weeks down the track? Old news or right on the pace? It was a lesson I never forgot. I moved from researching into producing, and a program that remains with me today is Blue Death, the scandal of mining blue asbestos by CSR in the WA mining town of Wittenoom. I was working with a terrific team, Paul Barry, who had just arrived from the UK, cameraman Wayne Harley, soundo Chris Auditon, the legendary editor Alec Cullen, and researcher Kate McClimate. Not a bad team. I was learning that making current affairs television is a team business. And I know this is a bit different for print and radio, but I found that the best programs are when teams work collaboratively and respect each other's skills and contributions. Blue Death also brought home to me the power of television in bringing people's stories and fights for justice to a national audience. I have never forgotten the bravery of those Whitnoom locals, who are now all dead, who were determined to bring CSR to account. They made me want to continue to tell stories like this. There are a few people I would really like to thank. A big shout out to the early 1980s Razor's Edge Collective on Radio 2SER FM. <laughs> It's, it's where I first dipped my toe into journalism and I've made lifelong friends. Peter Manning, who took a punt on an inexperienced researcher more than three decades ago. The late Phil Chubb, who convinced both Bob Hawke and Paul Keating to participate in Labor and Power and help fuel my love for political documentaries. The whole Four Corners team that I led between 2007 and 2015. You were the best, and it was a true pleasure and privilege to work with you all. There are a couple of people I must single out. The peerless Sarah Ferguson, the best producer-director in the business, Deb Masters, and the best two I see any executive producer can have in Mark Bannerman. Finally, a big thank you to the ABC that has supported me and given me extraordinary opportunities. It's taught me to be fearless but fair. It's shown me how important and precious independent public broadcasting is. 
and that we must never give up the fight to keep it and fully fund it. Thank you very much.